Hi, I'm Tony Heiser with KAB America. I'm the Business Development Manager for Commercial Electric and Hybrid E-Mobility Applications. Today, I'd like to speak about electrifying the auxiliaries in commercial vehicle applications. And I'd like to provide some use case examples utilizing the KEB T6 auxiliary inverter. As an agenda of topics, I'd like to start with a brief overview of KEB as a company, and then provide an introduction of the T6 auxiliary inverter for e-mobility applications. Then, I'd like to provide some use case examples of electrifying vehicle auxiliaries. I'll start with a few typical examples and go on to discuss examples of EPTO for body hydraulics EPTO from a generator source, and motor-driven or direct-drive hydraulic replacement applications. KEB is a leading global manufacturer of industrial control and automation products. The company has manufacturing facilities in Germany, the United States, and China, with sales offices globally. KEB manufactures a full lineup of automation products from touchscreen HMIs down to the motor shaft. Products include HMIs and embedded controls, AC inverters, AC induction and servo motors, including geared motors, and electromechanical clutches and brakes. The T6 auxiliary inverter is a product specifically designed to meet the requirements of commercial vehicle applications. As an overview, the T6 is an inverter system supplied by a high voltage DC source for controlling the high voltage, low power AC motors, powering vehicle auxiliaries such as pumps, compressors, and other motor driven equipment. All types of AC motors are supported, including induction, permanent magnet, and synchronous reluctance motors, and all can be operated with sensorless motor control. And lastly, the system supports CAN J1939 communications. Since a vehicle can have multiple auxiliary loads, the T6 was designed as a scalable and modular system solution. That is, a system can be scaled from a single inverter output up to six independent inverter outputs. And from a modularity standpoint, there are three power ratings for each output stage which includes 7.5, 15, and 30 kilowatts continuous. Thus, a wide variety of applications can be supported from a common platform. And from a system standpoint, there's a single high voltage DC supply connection, single coolant circuit, and a single low voltage connection, which also includes the CAN bus. When compared to multiple distributed inverter modules, a system solution reduces component count and costs and simplifies system layout. And as you can see, this is a much cleaner solution. And lastly, from a system standpoint, there's embedded control in each system. The embedded controller plays multiple roles. This includes acting as a CAN J1939 communications gateway and hub, managing system health and diagnostics, and lastly supports PLC programming, which is used for pre-configured programs for easy startup and commissioning or creating customized functionality. With an overview of the T6 auxiliary inverter system in mind, I'd like to provide some use case examples, starting with the typical application and building up from there. The most common applications start with electrifying chassis auxiliaries. This includes the power steering pump and air compressor for brakes and suspension. These components can be electrified each with their own inverter, or more preferably, combined into a two-in-one system and independently controlled. The chassis equipment may also include thermal management, such as a coolant pump or heat exchanger. In this case, the inverter system can be extended further to a three-in-one system. Building up from the chassis, the next most typical applications include incorporating body equipment in the cab for passenger vehicles. These vehicles are typically buses and generally involve electrifying an air compressor for the HVAC system. And then continuing with our previous example, a four-in-one system could be utilized. Likewise, for larger applications, such as an articulated bus, which may have two power steering pumps and two HVAC units, a six-in-one inverter system can be used. A second type of body equipment involves working vehicles or mobile machinery. These are vehicles which typically do large amounts of work aside from being driven and require additional power. This includes both on-highway vehicles and off-highway equipment. And examples include refuse trucks and street sweepers, lift trucks and mobile cranes, construction equipment, and agricultural tractors and implements. Quite often, these vehicles utilize hydraulics for performing their work functions, where power takeoff, or PTO, 
from the engine or transmission mechanically drives the hydraulic pump to transmit fluid mechanical force to operate the body equipment, such as pistons and hydraulic motors. There are several disadvantages to this type of system, which I'll come back to, and benefits to implementing electrohydraulics or hydraulic replacement altogether. But first, it should be noted that fully electrifying these working vehicles can be a challenge, in part due to the increased battery capacity needed for the working functions. Rather, an electric hybrid solution offers several performance, energy efficiency, and emissions reductions benefits without compromising the benefit of the existing powertrain, such as range, or having to significantly alter the chassis structure. Such an electric solution is EPTO. EPTO, or electric PTO, essentially involves using an electric motor to drive the hydraulic pump or other auxiliary for that matter, whereby the electric motor is controlled by an inverter and the inverter is supplied with power from either a battery or generator source. We'll take a look at some of these topologies in a bit, but first, let me go over some of the disadvantages of the traditional mechanical PTO and some of the benefits of electric PTO. Let me start with the disadvantages of the traditional mechanical PTO. First on the list of disadvantages of mechanical PTO is inefficient operation. This includes operation of both the auxiliary and the engine itself in terms of performance and energy consumption. In terms of performance, a PTO driven auxiliary relies on the engine speed. When the work being performed occurs when the engine is idling, an auxiliary such as a pump is operating at a lower speed and not producing work near its capacity. And in terms of power efficiency, Operation of the auxiliary also creates a load on the engine, causing the engine speed to fall, and thus operating the auxiliary at a less efficient operating point from a fuel consumption standpoint. Additionally, when an auxiliary such as a pump is not being used, this results in wasted energy since the excess pressure is bled off. The second disadvantage of mechanical PTO is oversizing of components. This stems from the prior disadvantage whereby a pump may need to be oversized to achieve the necessary performance, but at a point lower on its yield curve, and an engine may need to be oversized to account for the inefficient pump operation. And lastly, a third disadvantage of mechanical PTO is that it requires the engine to be running during operation and thus producing emissions. And inefficient operation of the engine while operating the auxiliaries further exacerbates the amount of emissions produced. On the other hand, there are several advantages to electric PTO, which resolve the drawbacks of mechanical PTO, as well as a few additional benefits. The first benefit of electric PTO is increased performance. With the operation of the auxiliary decoupled and independent of the engine, work can be performed under any condition, whether the engine is off, idling, or while the vehicle is being driven. And from a performance standpoint, this allows for full power from the auxiliary on demand. This can increase productivity of the equipment by reducing cycle rates, as well as by allowing multiple operations to be run simultaneously. The second benefit of EPTO is reduced component sizing. An auxiliary decoupled from the engine can be right-sized from a performance standpoint, according to the auxiliary's optimal operating point and the actual load requirements of the application, thus eliminating component oversizing resulting from the mismatch between power available from the engine and the power required to perform work under worst case scenarios, such as a heavy auxiliary load during engine idle. Decoupling the auxiliary loads from the combustion engine can also allow for reduced engine size, or in some cases, the elimination of secondary engines for body equipment altogether. Eliminating the auxiliary loads from the engine also allows it to run at a more efficient operating point and thus reducing fuel consumption, which leads us to the third benefit of EPTO, which is energy efficient operation. The electric motors themselves, as opposed to the combustion engine, are generally 90 to 95% efficient at their operating point. Furthermore, EPTO can be operated on demand, that is, when needed, thus eliminating excess standby power consumption, such as the example of bleeding off excess hydraulic circuit pressure when not in use. And decoupling auxiliary loads and running the engine at a more efficient operating point inherently leads to the fourth benefit, which is reducing emissions. Further benefits also include reduced noise, which allows for increased operator comfort, better operational safety, such as communicating when equipment is operating, and the opportunity to operate equipment for longer hours in residential areas. And finally, another benefit of EPTO is the potential for power recovery. For example, 
regenerative braking from an e-axle, or backdriving a pump from an overhauling load, such as lowering a hoist crane. These are two examples which can be used to capture energy otherwise wasted to charge and power the electric PTO system. There are two primary topologies for ePTO, battery powered and generator powered, and which is used may depend on the requirements of the vehicle. In fact, there are also hybrid solutions as well. The example of a battery powered electric PTO is relatively straightforward. A battery supplies DC power to the inverter, which in turn controls the electric motor to drive the hydraulic pump to provide fluid mechanical force to the body equipment. Here, the battery would be part of an already fully electrified vehicle or battery modules can be added to an existing combustion vehicle. This solution generally relies on the batteries being charged overnight for a full day's operation. At the other end of the EPTO topology spectrum is a generator powered solution. Here, the mechanical PTO of the combustion engine is retained, but instead of being directly coupled to the hydraulic pump, it is instead coupled to a permanent magnet AC motor, which acts as a generator. The generator output can then be connected to an inverter output module, which rectifies the AC waveform to supply the DC link voltage to power subsequent motor output modules, such as the hydraulic pump. The benefit of this topology is that it allows for an electrified solution without the need for batteries, but it also has its limitations since it requires the engine to be running for the equipment to be in operation. Nonetheless, it can still be suitable for many applications, in particular, electrifying agricultural implements via the tractor PTO. As a note, in regards to the generator powered EPTO solution, this does not mean that an AC mains connection can be used as a shore power supply. This has other implications, which I will not go into detail here. In between the two previous examples is a hybrid solution. A hybrid solution allows the system to run from battery power when the engine is off and clutch to operate via mechanical PTO while driving when the engine is at a more efficient operating point. Furthermore, with the mechanical PTO engaged while driving, the generator could also be used to charge the battery and a smaller battery can be utilized. As a note, Regenerative braking can also contribute to reducing the battery size. A perfect example for this type of hybrid EPTO would be a refuse truck application. Here, a fully electric solution may not be feasible given the size, weight, and range of the battery needed to perform the working functions and carry the payload in addition to the propulsion. Battery operation from the hybrid solution can be used to control the hydraulic pump during the lifting and lowering cycles, independent from the engine while idling or stopped. Driving between pickups, the mechanical PTO can be engaged to operate the hydraulic pump, such as for compacting, and the generator recharges the battery. And at the end of the run, battery operation can be used during ejection. And the final use case example would be motor-driven or direct drive hydraulic replacement applications. That is, directly operating equipment with electromechanical power transmission components, such as motors and gearing, as opposed to fluid hydraulic means. Hydraulics are notoriously inefficient and hydraulic fluid is a hazardous chemical, so there are obvious reasons to consider more efficient and environmentally safer solutions. In the example of the refuse truck, the large hydraulic pump controlling all the body equipment can be replaced with electric motors for each of the lifting, compacting, and ejecting operations. A second example would be a street sweeper application where the hydraulic motors controlling the brooms can be replaced with electric, direct drive, or geared motors, as well as the conveyor. So that wraps it up for the use case examples that I've prepared for this presentation. Whereas these examples are presented from a high level standpoint, they reflect application solutions implemented with the KEB T6 auxiliary inverter. In addition to exemplifying various applications which can be supported, an auxiliary inverter system solution can flexibly scale to integrate additional electrified auxiliaries and equipment and can be used as a platform for a variety of vehicle types and body equipment. If you have applications you're looking to electrify, please feel free to reach out and we'd be glad to discuss solutions.